In America, we had this concept. It's called truth and justice. As long as you live in your truth, you will have justice. And as long as you seek justice, that will be the truth. So all this is playing out in Fulton County, Georgia, where a district attorney by the name of Fannie Willis leads a team of state prosecutors as they try to prosecute Donald Trump. They say that Donald Trump tried to overturn a Georgia election. Of course, this is against the law. So if that wasn't enough drama for three Netflix specials, a couple of HBO specials, and a PBS documentary, I bring you this. Donald Trump's team asserts, and they filed a motion that says that Fannie Willis, due to a relationship, an improper relationship, she was having with a private citizen who she put on the payroll of the Georgia state using state money, a man by the name of Nathan Wade, she paid half a million dollars to work on the Donald Trump case. Not only did she pay this friend that she was having a relationship with, she also benefited from the money that she was paying him, which means kind of a money laundering type of situation. Allegedly. So we got a couple things we got to look at. One of those being, does this have anything at all to do with Donald Trump as they try to remove Fannie Willis from the case? So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a conversation about what's happening in Georgia, about this case, about Fannie Willis, and try to get to an understanding of where we are in the pursuit of truth and justice. My name is Tim Black. You're tuned in to Calling It Out. Now, the stakes in this case are significant. Not only for Fannie Willis, but for Donald Trump. Not only for Donald Trump, but for America. Let me break it down. So Fannie Willis has taken the stand, including many others who have taken the stand, including Nathan Wade. And now Scott McAfee, the judge, will have to determine if Danny Willis will be able to continue to try the case against Donald Trump or if Georgia state officials, the prosecutor's office, will have to appoint another attorney to try the case. This is so important because if they have to pick another attorney to try the case, this may prolong the trial until after the election. And if Trump wins the election, that could change things. There's also some personal harm that's been caused by this case. Willis' father, John C. Floyd, who was a civil rights attorney, testified that Fannie Willis has received death threats. So many death threats that she's had to move her residence. So it gets worse. Judge McAfee has his work cut out for him because he must decide if there is any appearance of impropriety. And if that and if so, does that appearance of impropriety give Donald Trump the opportunity in his defense to show that there was an unjust enrichment? Fannie Willis unjustly enriched herself and benefited from this state's case. And if so, that's going to give Donald Trump on a silver platter an opportunity to appeal the case. The central legal question is, was there improper conduct? And if so, should Willis be removed from the case? And if so, what will be the impact on the case? Not only is there an election with Donald Trump we got to consider, if he wins the primary, then he goes to the general. And it does look like he's going to win the primary. We got to look at the re-election of Fannie Willis who in about 263 days, she's up for re-election. What was once considered a rising star may be falling quickly. People are saying, Tim Black, come on, man. This case should never be about Fannie Willis and her relationships, who she slept with, who she didn't sleep with. And I agree with you. It should not be about that. But you know what? Fannie Willis made it about that when she put herself in this situation when she paid a man who she was having an affair with to work on a case with the president that they're prosecuting Donald Trump. Knowing Donald Trump has millions of dollars, that this was a possibility that this could come out and that it does look inappropriate. If not illegal, definitely inappropriate. Is it enough to overturn the case? Is it enough for Trump to be able to file an appeal? What have you? Like I said, judges are going to have to make their mind up. My thing with us, for the purposes of this video, folks, is this truth and justice? Is it truth and justice 
for Donald Trump to be able to use every legal means he can to delay the trial in order to put himself in a more favorable position? Or is it truth and justice to say, hey, get this out of here. Let's focus on the, the issue at hand, which is the case of Georgia, the state of Georgia, against Donald Trump. What is justice? What is truth? Much of the analysis about the Trump trial and looking at Willis, will she still be on the trial, focuses, focuses on it from a political perspective. I want us to look at it from a moral perspective and from the fundamentals of truth and justice. The judge's decision, whether Willis stays on a case or goes, will have implications that are far-reaching. It will impact how this case is viewed for the rest of history. We have a president on trial, and the allegation is that he tried to overturn a state election for his own personal benefit. With all the noise and the ruckus of the Willis situation, and people saying, let's not, let's, you know, let's not focus on Willis and her relationships. And this is separate. And I understand the only problem is it's not separate. It's being used as a mechanism that will also alter, if not the actual proceedings against Donald Trump, but the timeliness of it, in public opinion of it, is if we needed any type of interference at all to make that public opinion already be contentious as hell from the sides that agreed it or they feel that Donald Trump is guilty of something, whether they've looked at evidence or not, or the sides that say Donald Trump is a victim of something, whether they've looked at any evidence or not. People come in with their perceived notions of innocence and guilt because Donald Trump and the Democratic Party, and the Republican Party, most contentious, maybe in history, I don't know. But it's very contentious, in my lifetime anyway. This case involves such powerful figures. And we don't get to pick and choose. We don't get to pick and choose. It is what it is. Just so the ramifications are so far reaching that we should take a breath. We should take a moment and step back and realize where we are in history. Realize what this says about our legal system. The balance of power. This case, like no other case in recent memory, will determine, does politics reign over our political process, or does our legal process take precedence over the president? We need to wrap our heads around the fact that this case will determine, the way we look back at history, when we look at it, will determine, hey, does does our political does political power have a sway over judicial independence? Do our do our court systems, do our processes of law and order get overrun by the political political power of a president? That's where we are. Truth, justice. The judges must remain impartial and free from external pressures. If Willis is removed, it can raise concerns about interference in the legal process. Because this will, once again, Trump will benefit from this. This will push back the entire process, possibly past the election, and then we're in a whole other space where Trump can't even be tried as a sitting president. You can't try a sitting president for a crime. The judge's ruling may possibly erode any trust people have in the legal process, being autonomous from political power. Now, there are those of us who've been paying attention to our legal process, and we know it's corrupt. We know that our legal process, because we can just look at how it treats the poor, how it treats those without the ability to hire the best representation, the plea bargain situation, the bail situation, who gets bail, who gets bond. We're not even going to get into, though we should, maybe we should, get into how we look at how judgments are handed down and how we say justice is blind, but it's not blind. Because we know 
If you have the money, you'll never see a rich person on death row. Is there any integrity? Remember, our legal system, the judicial branch is supposed to have serve as a check and balance over our executive branch. But if the executive branch can use legalities to overturn the legal system and then throw an investigation, what does that tell us? Maybe it tells us what we already knew, that money and influence trump what's in that book, what's in that statute. The law. We've been continuously hearing about, oh, our democracy's on the line, yada, yada, yada. This election will determine it. Maybe this court case will determine the perception of democracy, of our legal system. Because it kind of does. And it depends on what side you're sitting on. But regardless of whether you support Trump or not, or if you support prosecuting Trump, you're going to feel a certain kind of way about this, and you're going to say, hey, this favored a political stance. If Willis is replaced, the trial is postponed, and you're a Trump supporter, you may say, the political stance and the power of Donald Trump was able to prevent catastrophe. And then justice from occurring, which should have been the full prosecution of Donald Trump. But if you're on the other side, you believe that, and you believe that Donald Trump broke the law, that Donald Trump tried to interfere with the Georgia state election, and then Willis is removed, you may then feel our system is corrupt. There is no justice, and that the power of politics from a former president, shut it down. This is all public perception as well. That's the next part, public perception. What do we, how do we view it? What do we see? Do we trust our legal system? Once again, coming from my point of view, from those that pay attention, who cover the legal system, who cover trials, who sits back and watches case after case of convicted person be overturned 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 38 years later. Oh, this person was innocent, though they were convicted, and now we know there's no way possible that this person did the crime. So I already have mistrust for our legal system. Now that I think this is an opportunity, well, this presents a dilemma that will extend this across the spectrum. I want this to go out to all my media people. Is the media person, your commentary on this issue is vital. And it's vital in so many ways. One of those is you help shape the perception of this proceeding. So I'm trying to be as careful as I can not to put a dog in the race on this case because I want to look at it from its impact. Because to me, this case is bigger than Donald Trump. I know that's crazy, right? But it is. This is about What's going to happen? What can happen? What will be allowed to happen in this country? And how our courts deal with the truly powerful. We already know the rich, the rich get richer. But this will be a case for examination. This is, this is history playing out right in front of us. So media folks, must be careful, media, we must be careful how we present this case. The perception that we give, that we leave, the information that we expose should be above board and real and transparent and obvious. And if you do carry a bias, admit that bias. Please engage with this content in the comment section. I want to know what you see, what you feel. Is this going to be a flashpoint that will be looked at and studied for the next 100 years. The court case of a president potentially being convicted, or was this a political witch hunt, which is what Donald Trump's been saying for the last three years? We have to have an independent judiciary system. 
It's independent of any political party's machinations, influence, and any wealthy or positioned powerful person's influence. Law is supposed to be about the law. If our law is not about the law, it's about something else, like your external power, your ability to control the career outcomes of individuals who are trying your case. Uh, that's like the beginning of the end. But I still, as I, even as I say it, I have to, I have to add what's different. People already know, people already trust. Their money changes everything. And at the end of the day, isn't Trump just a person with a lot of money? He just has power to go along with it. But people with money get special treatment already. We already know this. This is non-debatable. It's not up for discussion. It's up for you to accept reality or not. But for those that have been paying attention, it's not, it's not something we even need to have a conversation about, really. We know, it's, we know it to be true. Water is wet. The case of Fannie Willis, the case of Donald Trump, will test, improve, if our judicial system is as corrupt or even more corrupt than was already considered it to be, and if there's any opportunity or possibility of having a fair trial. And it's also going to show exa exactly just how separate America is, how screwed up we are, and how divisively uh, separate we are as far as ideology and how politics politics needs to end. I think we need to get rid of parties. The political party landscape is so horrible. And I think that's part of what's feeding into this. But I want you to put in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. This is about truth and justice. Not just about do you think Donald Trump did it. Because all the evidence hasn't been presented yet. So how could you make that determination? But this is such a pivotal point. This will decide if we ever get to that truth. Yeah, this truth will decide if we get to other truths. At the end of the day, this case will test our commitment as a country to the rule of law and truth and justice.